it's Brad, Jack of All Adventures. I'm going to do a quick video here to hopefully help save somebody else a lot of trouble. Um, I uh, had a problem with charging my Tesla, and it turned out to be purely because the fob was sending it a signal to open the charge door. Um, and it took most of a week to figure out that that was the problem, and I was the one that diagnosed it. Um, Tesla had the car for three days and worked on it and swapped out some pretty expensive parts that they've charged me for, which hopefully they will um, rectify that situation a little bit. They, they said after I, I was just there and they're going to look into it for further review to determine um, how they best want to handle it. So I will keep you posted on that. But... Um, Basically what happened, um, I'll probably give you a five minute story here if you want to listen to it. I was leaving the keys, the Florida keys, and I stopped in Marathon to try to charge the car. Um, wouldn't charge. I think there's there's only like four chargers there anyways, and um, I started making video of all this too, but it'd take a lot of effort to put it all together and make a one real good video, which would be a project someday for me, but I don't know if <clears throat> I'm up for it. Past uh, performance is um, an example of future performance. <laughs> Probably won't make it. And we'll just have to document this experience with this video. But it'd be nice someday to put it all together and make a really good video for you guys. But um, so it, could, it wouldn't charge in a uh, marathon. And I looked and I'm like, if I take it easy, I can get off the keys and make it to Florida City. Um, I just can't drive fast or aggressive need to monitor my energy consumption, which I made a great video doing that. And I might be able to put something little together on that relatively easily so I can post that one. But um, I made it to Florida City with a 4% charge and plugged in there and nothing still would not charge. Um, I was there, so I started, on, started with Tesla Roadside pretty quickly um, I've had some past bad experiences with them, and if you look at my channel, my most popular video on my channel, um, there was another fool that tried to drive his Tesla to the supercharger and didn't make it. The big difference is he was driving 75 mile an hour and drove it to minus 5% and didn't make any effort to slow down or anything that could help save him a lot of trouble. Part of the reason why I was making that video... <laughs> from uh, Marathon to Florida City was just to prove how you can monitor your energy and slow down and make sure you're going to make it without much range anxiety. And um, But that video there that has became pretty popular. It's my, my most popular video to the date. I got a more popular short, but this is definitely my most popular videos by quite a bit. Some of the live footage I just videoed of um, my experience being at the Tesla Supercharger with um, this Tesla on a flatbed bed that would not take a charge and the 12 volt battery died with the charge cable plugged into the car while it was still on the truck so the truck was kind of tethered to the uh, supercharger and it's a little comical to watch the real life adventure of how the way it all panned out so if you got a minute take up take a minute look through my videos and I'll go to videos and you know sort by popular and you can check those few videos out um, anyway back to my story um, which in those videos you see I tried to get a hold of Tesla Roadside to help that guy out and they were pretty slow to get a hold of me um, they actually answered the call much quicker than they did a year and a half ago when I made those videos so I will give them kudos for that however they really weren't able to provide me any kind of meaningful assistance to um, get my car going again and they just wanted to tow the car to the service center um, I had to contact Tesla Insurance because I have Tesla Insurance, and that took about 45 minutes to get a claim number so I could get the, char the tow truck on its way, and then the tow truck didn't show up, and I mean, it was just a circus of e events. Um, while I was trying to wait for the tow truck, I actually got the car away from the supercharger because, I mean, it was actually pretty crowded supercharger, and I did have a little bit of battery left. Um, went and plugged it into a 110 volt outlet on that was on the outside of the um, I think it's some kind of smoky barbecue place that is right there by the Tesla supercharger in Florida City and um, 
it still wouldn't take a charge on a 110 volt outlet. Uh, turned green just for a moment and then then quit and said, nope, don't want to do this. Um, so I continued to wait and wait. By the time they got there, my car was down to 0%, which I don't really understand how it consumed 4% of the battery just sitting here running the air conditioner. Probably a little bit about um, the battery maintenance system, uh, realizing there wasn't a whole lot of energy left at the bottom of the battery. Um, but they put me on a flatbed, towed me to the Tesla Service Center and uh, Coral Gables and dropped me off there. It was 10 o'clock at night when they dropped me off. And I spent the night in the car with no air conditioning and with my two dogs waiting for Tesla Service to open at 7 a.m. Um, actually, it's kind of crazy. A um, couple little details I'll throw in there. Um, it actually said charge port disabled it was one of the codes that was thrown in the middle of the night. I was up just uncomfortable most of the night because it got pretty humid in the car and had the windows down. Um, at one point, I was starting to sleep and I started feeling the rain on my feet. Um, so I had to get up, put the windows up. At that point, 12 volt battery and everything was still still functioning. I um, was able to use the windows and the doors and everything. Around probably 5.30 or so in the morning, I actually fell asleep pretty good and I got a wake up call at 7.20 saying, hey, why aren't you up and out of your car yet? <laughs> And that's why my wife checking on me and checking on the status, but um, <laughs> which woke me up from a very good dead sleep. And the car was completely dead. The 12 volt battery was dead. Everything was dead. Um, if you check out my comments and stuff that I respond to on um, my video from a year and a half ago, somebody has said, "Well, that's you can't get stuck in your car." Well, you're not really stuck in an emergency, but. Even when I tried to open the doors, the, the motors that operate the front doors um, kind of still wanted to take control of the door, and it wouldn't easily open. Um, I'm sure if it's an emergency situation, car's on fire or anything like that, you've got to get out. You just push it. And But I was extra careful with that because I didn't want to hurt, hurt the doors or hurt the motors. And I was, it ended up easier to wiggle out of the passenger side than the driver's side. But left the dogs in the car. It's still early and it wasn't, you know, super hot, but just slightly uncomfortable. Went to Tesla service. And they kind of like, well, maybe we'll get to it sometime today. I don't know if we get to it today. We'll call and let you know. See you later. Um, I was a little bit more persistent because, you know, dogs are in a car and, you know, I travel and I stay in the car. It's not, I wasn't just happen to be in Miami or live there. I can go home or anything. I um, was kind of stuck there until the car could be charged. So, once they found out the dogs were in the car, they made that as, said that's a priority, and they kind of jumped on my case right away. Um, I had some video of how they had trouble getting the front open because there's an extra cable that they couldn't reach and all that, which kind of mirrors back to my other video. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, they, I ended up just letting them be so that they could do it. I took the car, dogs into the waiting room, and they... They got the car in a service center without telling me, which kind of bugged me because I wanted some stuff out of the car. And at the point where I walked by, you know, it's, you could barely get the front doors open. Um, and I wanted to get some stuff out of the car. But after my patients ran out an hour or so later, I went and talked to them. And they're like, oh, yeah. And they let me go up and get stuff out of the car. Um, kind of waited for them, waited for them to reply and let me know what's going on. Um, communication was just so-so and I kind of felt like I was being bullshitted quite often still um, and at one point they're like oh we got it figured out you know here's your it's gonna cost you $800 for a new charge port door charge port charge port door and another $300 for uh, a 12 volt battery because your 12 volt battery went dead well I know my 12 volt battery is lead acid battery um, actually did have Tesla replace it like it was like a year ago um, or maybe two years ago, whatever. It's been a little while ago, but it was still functioning fine. Um, and I basically had to insist that they leave it alone because once it charged back up, it probably was going to be fine. And if it wasn't, then I could choose to replace it at that point. But um, they, they, they tried some of their BS to try to twist my arm into buying that, and they gave up. So I was going to have like an 800 and some dollar repair bill. 
Um, they kept working on the car, working on the car. They kept telling me, probably, probably be ready, probably be ready. And then 6 o'clock came, it wasn't ready. And it was some new problem that they are having. They couldn't get the software update to install. And once they got the software update to install, then it would be fine. And they'd be able to charge it and get me out the door. Um, but... So I had to go stay in a hotel that night. Um, so I got up next morning, come back down, waited, waited, waited around for mediocre type communications, but they assured me they were on it, gonna get me out of there as fast as possible. Uh, 5.30 came around and they insisted that they were gonna have it done. Um, and definitely don't worry about it. You know, it might not be six, but with, give us an extra 10, 15 minutes and we'll have the car done for you. You don't have to get a place to stay tonight you'll be good. Um, I don't know, shortly after six o'clock or, you know, eventually, um, while I was waiting for the car, um, they sent the technician down to talk to me and he was actually pretty cool. Sat down there and it's like, well, sir, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you know, your car's up there in pieces. Um, battery's still like it, it's just starting to take a charge. So it's almost at 0%. We finally got it to start taking charge, which I could tell by looking at the app that that was true and it was starting to take a charge so um but he's like you gotta go find a place to stay for the night which um unfortunately the 300 dollar place that was close and nice didn't have any rooms for that night i already knew that so end up trying to go the cheap route and got a crappy hotel room that was only supposed to be 130 dollars but once they found out there was two dogs i had no choice but to give them another 60 bucks um, to stay in their dumpy room <laughs> with two dogs. Um, so I ended up costing you know, like $190 to stay another night. And um, so you would think, you know, it's almost going to be ready the night before that, you know, I should get it first thing in the morning. But they worked on it until all the way to like 1 o'clock. <laughs> Around 1 o'clock, it was out and ready to go and they didn't they didn't communicate with me I, I kind of was able to uh, check on the car through the app and I was like I'm gonna go look for it and I went out and looked for it and I found it in the parking lot and put the dogs in it and went in and talked to them and they're like sure enough you know we had to change this three thousand dollar part which actually I knew the day before there was gonna be another three thousand dollars in fees um, or a part that they had to change and so the total bill was like $3,900 um, and but the car was done and it was good and fortunately I thought before I walked out I was like man I really want that uh, $3,000 charger <laughs> um, put it on my put it on my garage wall or something I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but um they were like I don't know why you want that but here it is so they they did give it to me and I did get it which is um, I will give them kudos for that too um, they, I did make them aware that I had, you know, not like a great YouTube channel that's got tons of followers or anything, but I had some following on YouTube and wanted to make a video on it too. So they, and I think they felt like in Coral Gables, they did a pretty good job, but I, I left not very satisfied feeling lied to and, um, kind of is what it was. And <laughs> I left and I was able to charge uh, at Fort Drum on our way up here um, and made it to my campground in Orlando uh, yeah I got little videos that I have already posted where I wasn't able to get in a campground because they don't want to call this a camper um, it identifies as a camper and it's been had its little surgery done so it's got a refrigerator and a microwave back there I don't know if you can see that and an actual permanent bed in there so um, I, I still feel it's a camper but they, they didn't want me in here for that night. The ranger didn't want me in there that night. So went and spent the night in the Walmart parking lot and got up in the morning so I could talk to the manager. And usually a manager can take a look at the car and say, yeah, I get it. It's, this isn't your average um, homeless type situation where we don't want you sleeping in the car. This is closer to a real camper. And most of them are cooperative. And he let me stay here and was uh, resting comfortably. <laughs> Um, recovering um, had a ranger actually come in there and give me a bunch of shit because I was turned away the night before and he knew I wasn't supposed to be here and I was like well I checked in legitimately with um, with the front desk so 
leave me alone and go do your homework and come back if I need to move. And he reluctantly left. He kind of wanted to have an argument with me, and I didn't. I wasn't going to entertain it, but I wasn't going to back down from him. <laughs> Anyways, um, that was just kind of a pointless part of the discussion. But shortly after that, um, charge doors started opening up on my car, flipping open, closing. Every few minutes it would open, stay open, and then close. And I'm like, oh man, this car's got a problem again. There's something, there's still a problem with this car. I don't know what it is, but there's definitely, it's, it's starting to act weird. It was doing that charge door opening and closing um, kind of all night. It was helping keep me awake. <laughs> I was at the surf, waiting for the service center to open. Um, so I'm like, I'm going to stop at the supercharger on my way. I was going to go to Universal and City Walk and all that for the evening. And um, on my way there, I'm going to stop and see if it'll charge. I still had 75% battery, so I wasn't overly worried. But um, when I pulled in there and um, plugged the charge cord in, it would not charge. Um, so I knew I had a problem. Um, had a couple other things to do. So while I was doing that, I, yeah, oh, it's really cool too. And I probably put this unedited video up on um, YouTube, even though it's not like my favorite video, probably. But I did, when I pulled into the supercharger um, that I wasn't gonna stop at because I had 75% charge, there was a new Cybertruck guy just had it for 10 days. And um, he was pretty happy with it. And he was told me about it and had a, I had a fun little 10 minute discussion with him why my battery was, <laughs> my car was not charging and uh, I got set in the back seat of his truck and everything. So um, I do have, I was shooting video while I was doing that and probably could have a little bit of edit to really be interesting, but I'll probably throw it up there unedited. That's sort of what I do for my videos because it takes a lot more work to edit them. Anyways, um, yeah, it didn't charge. I left and I came back on my way back. And I'm like, I'm going to. I didn't go to Universal because it's too stressed out with the car. And um, pulled in to the service or to the supercharger and plugged in, and still didn't work. And I kind of knew it wasn't. I mean, it's just at this point, it, it, the problem was what it was. And but here's where the sweet tea comes in. Um, I uh, was thirsty. I just left it plugged in. There wasn't. There was only a couple other people at the supercharger. It wasn't. I wasn't taking up space. Uh, somebody needed a charger or anything. So I went into the Wawa to get some iced tea and I prefer on sweet tea and filled up a whole cup of tea and took a, took a swig out as I was going to the cash register to pay and it was super sweet actually, beyond sweet. Um, so I complained about it a little bit or call it what you will. I wanted, wanted on sweet tea and they were like, yeah, no problem, sir. We can We'll, we'll take a look at it. And it actually took them probably five or 10 minutes to figure it out. Um, so while I was waiting for them to figure it out, I pulled out my Tesla app and I'm like, I'm gonna tell Tesla, it's like, hey, your car, your car's not fixed, man. You guys had it and sent, sent me on my way and it's still doing the same thing. Pretty much the exact same problem. You know, you plug it in, it blinks for dark blue for a little bit and never goes green and um, goes light blue and so, well, I pull out the phone and look at it. It's got a it's charging cords green going into the going into the car. I'm like, wow, it's charging. You know, cool. I'm so glad I left it plugged in because I almost wanted to unplug it after it wasn't charging. But I was like, well, maybe it was just a little bit of patience. So they get this, they get the unsweet tea available for me and say, hey, no charge. Don't worry about it. Sorry, it took ten minutes to get you an unsweet tea. So they were really cool about that. I was. I um, wasn't really expecting to get it for free, but it was, it was kind of nice. <laughs> but really, I should I owe them because had that not happened, um, I walked back out to the car and wasn't charging. So as far as I'd known, you know, it was never charging. You know, it's, it's me. I get there, it's light blue. Um, so I'm like at this point, it's like I got enough charge. I'm just going back to the campground. I just need to relax for the night. Uh, I think it was still like around 7 o'clock and I could have made it to Universal but it would have been almost by the time I got there it was just wouldn't have been worth it so went back to the campground and started thinking about things I'm like hmm 
I wonder if the fob has anything to do with it. Why would the fob... I don't know why the fob would have anything to do with it, but maybe, maybe it does. Maybe it does. So then I started running a couple experiments and get the fob... Plug the, my 110 charger into the outlet and um, connected it up and, you know, it plugged the mobile charger in and it's the same thing. doesn't want to take a charge. But I left it plugged in and moved the fob away from the car and sure enough, started started charging. Um, bring the fob back close to the car, kicks, kicks it out and stops charging. So I'm more or less extremely confident it was the fob creating a problem and I called this morning and talked to Coral Gables Super Center or Service Center again and they um, kind of kind of tell me, oh, sorry about your luck. Um, I don't really know why your father would do it, but, um, you know, we did the right thing when we replaced those parts for you, sir, and, you know, I'm like, well, if you, if the fob's the problem, the whole time you replace some parts that didn't need replacing, and um, I think we need to discuss it, and they're like, no, nope, sorry, sir, but, you know, take, I recommend, you know, you got a charge problem and still having it, and um, even though I don't have it, if I get the fob away from the car, um, you know, you should take it to the service center locally there in Orlando, and, you know, they'll take a look at it and diagnose it for you and all that. So, um, that's what I decided to do, and I ended up with a really great, um, guy, um, Spencer, who I pretty much, I got video, he, he let me video pretty much my whole discussion with him and everything, and I haven't watched it yet. Um, you know, if I ever put in everything together, I mean, the, the video could be, I probably have five five hours of video and audio and stuff over this whole adventure probably probably even more than that I mean there's there's a lot and that's why I probably will never edit it and do it because it's a heck of a project I mean just to watch it all and see what I have takes hours um so this recap might be all we get of this situation but he, he took really good care of me um I will say he pushed back just a little bit on a little trust thing um, and how you know when I bring this car to the service center I got to trust their diagnostics and I'm like well how can I trust your diagnostics when your diagnostics said to replace these parts and I still got a problem and then I diagnose the fob and he's like yeah I kind of he was having a really hard time BSing me and he didn't really try very hard I got to give him credit for that but he, he did a little bit did just a little bit um, and maybe I'll a little video up of that or whatever something I can do that's a little bit shorter that's still kind of it's worth doing um, I don't know we'll see how that goes I mean it, um, but once once I kind of convinced them that they weren't gonna just um, that I had a legitimate real argument that and I kind of showed him some video where hey you know take the fob away and he's like, all right, I'm not going to, um, we'll get you a new fob because that's what I was kind of insisting on. I was like, just get me a new fob. I don't need you to do any more diagnostics. I know what the problem is. Get me a new fob. The car works. Boom. Diagnostics done. <laughs> it's the fob. And, um, so they did that. It took about an hour, hour and a half. Um, why we patiently waited and I probably got some, you know, if you look back at my channel, I had some, the dogs patiently waiting at the Coral Gables waiting room and the and actually it wasn't Orlando it was oh, it's west of Orlando just a little ways off 27 um, east of 27 was a um, service center we went to it was the closest one to where I'm camping in Claremont and uh, yeah all that went went really well they didn't charge me anything so we're sorry about all the problems and you're Accounts under further review, and we will be taking a look at it and getting back to you sometime in the next few days um, with what their resolution is going to be. So that's as fair as I can. I mean, that's um, as much as I can hope for. I mean, they're going to take a look at it. Um, I'm pretty sure they replace parts that. I mean, it's a, it's a very unusual situation. It may be the first time that anybody's had a fob malfunction like this to create this type of a problem and hopefully it I mean all they Tesla wrote this definitely should be something on Tesla's rope side from now on it's like you have a fob for your car it's not charging walk 100 feet away get that fob away from the car and see if it starts charging because 
you know, it take less than 30 seconds, you can get that fob far enough away from the car and then set it down and walk back to the car. And if it starts charging, you know, problem solved, you need a new fob. I mean, it's that freaking easy. And, you know, I had hours and days and uh, $500 in hotel bills and, you know, $4,000 Tesla repair bills and everything else. And all I really needed was a fob the whole time. So that's my story. Um, sticking to it, I guess. Um, I think it's, I think it's turning out to be, I, I, weird part here, I, I'll keep going for a couple more minutes. If you, if you're still, still listening to me, I appreciate it. Um, a few other coincidences was over the weekend. So Tuesday is when I was live in the Keys. I was in Miami for the weekend at a conference and cops got called on me a couple times for having the dogs in the car for a while in dog mode. And both times I will say that the cops were really cool with me. They didn't, um, they understood that the dogs were cared for and were not in a hazardous type situation. And I was um, not, um, you know, abandoning my dogs, which if you watch any of my videos, you can see they're quite well cared for. And um, so that part was good. Um, but the second time when the cops were called, the, the Karens and the Kyles, they pinned my car in um, so I couldn't leave and they did send me a text message because I had a note in the window saying, you know, any concerns, you know, make sure you contact me. I'll be here. Well, they, they tried to call me while I was test driving a new Model X. Um, cause if you, if, if you look back at my videos recently, I threw a couple up there of the um, cyber truck and I just happened, uh, when I went into Miami, the parking deck I was staying at or parked at and staying course I do that just a little bit which probably they, they didn't want me to stay there which clearly that's what happened the first night too is the first day when the cops got called I think they knew I was gonna spend the night there um maybe maybe not I don't know they were nine the dogs were in the car was at the conference and perfectly comfortable in dog mode but um they made they made me leave and not, I couldn't leave the car in the deck with the dogs. Um, so I didn't have a place to stay that night. Um, and then I stayed, ultimately I stayed at uh, Cracker Barrel in Florida City because I was going to go back to the Keys. And, but I ended up coming back and um, just stayed in Florida City. There's a Model 3. It was probably car camping as well next to me. But I left early and went hiking that morning or uh, jogging on the beach that morning. So I didn't get to talk to him. And then went to my conference and got a good parking spot so I could check on the dogs all day and then go take another look at the Cybertruck and test drive a new Model X. So my point is, I, I test drive a new Model X two days before my car went bad. And um, and to me, the whole time, I'm, it's like it won't take a charge. It's not hardware. It's software. It's something weird. And um, it could potentially be software related problem and they couldn't run this update and they, they had a bunch of weird problems why they couldn't couldn't solve my problem why it was being diagnosed. So I always had this weird feeling that's kind of like the moon landing. You know what happened and you know no one faked it, but it's possible they faked it. And it's like here, it's like they would never sabotage my car to try to convince me to buy a new one. That's just ridiculous. However, it's possible, you know, they could, they could force a software change over the air and make my car not charge to make me want to buy a new one because I just test drove a new one. But very conspiracy theorists and you know, I'm fairly certain that wasn't the truth, but you know, as as this was playing out and you know, I got this big repair bill and they really didn't do anything and I still had the problem, I was always a little concerned with that. But I was really glad to find out, you know, that hey, it was the fob and the fob is what created the problem and this fob was malfunctioning and sending so it was a hardware related issue kind of um, the fob was sending an issue sending a signal to the car to open charge port bottom line that's all the problem was the entire time so all right now I've really rattled on for a long time probably the fewest number of ums I've had in a half an hour which I sure I had several but um this story <laughs> there's there's one this story was probably pretty near and dear to my heart over the last week. It's been, been a rough, rough go at it. And 
just talking about it's a half an hour video so what if I actually put all the video together that I got I mean dogs in the waiting room you know the tow truck come in and the um, tow truck driver there's another one too the tow truck driver was awesome because still remember I got this tow truck story from my YouTube channel where you know I got 77,000 views on um, video I did of Tesla on a flatbed so when my Tesla was on a flatbed you know I'm definitely videoing all that so I might probably get some pieces out if you want to um, comment on this and tell me you know I, I want to see it I want to see it you know maybe I'll motivate me to put a little effort into it but I, I figure it'd take two or three days to make a good 20 minute video or half an hour video out of everything that happened this week this last week so I don't think I'm up for that <laughs> but I don't mind making this now it's 31 minutes length of this video so if you watched all this thank you very much uh, please like and subscribe to my channel um, I do kind of want to do some YouTube videos and be honest and fair and give the real situation because Tesla's Tesla's aren't perfect but if you look at all my comments on um, that other video that I did did that's actually popular and I'm sure this video will never get 7,000 7, views but um, yeah, it'd be great if it did um, I guess I would probably like that um, it's part of me does want to be a somewhat successful YouTuber so yeah please like subscribe to my channel um, watch some of the stuff I do it's a little bit silly it's all over the board um, it'll, hopefully it'll always be genuine me um, if I never get too successful I'm sure it'll always be genuine me but one of the things that does concern me is like if you do get a little bit of success um, how it does actually affect you um, I'm honest enough with myself that you know, I'd like to be as honest as possible, but I don't know. People are real. I mean, real people will admit that, you know, say Tesla says, you know, please don't put this stuff up here, you know, and we'll give you whatever, or do this or that, or, you know, or they threaten to, you know, make my car not work or some craziness. It's like, I don't, I don't know how I would respond. I'd like to think that I respond with, Screw you guys. I'm getting the most honest stuff out there. Um, but, yeah, I know. The real world is you get threatened or rewarded. Shit. You do shit that you might not be totally proud of. But I'm going to try to try to keep this as straight and honest as I can possibly be. Um, and accurate. I mean, this... So my experience here was I'm not trying to bash Tesla for something they didn't do. Um, you know, they're, they're serv I mean, if you look back at that other video that I did, you'll see that I was bashing their service a year and a half ago. So maybe I got what I deserved because, um, yeah, I don't, I just, I feel there's a certain expectation. Uh, this is a good, I asked this just on this way just a few minutes ago or an hour or so ago whenever it was that I was taking the car in two three hours ago I there's a Toyota dealer right next to the Tesla dealer and I accidentally pulled into the Toyota dealer for service and it, it was a really weird experience I'm like wow they're welcoming they're they're just pull up here and they come out to your car and everything and that's just not Tesla service um That'd be a fun little video too, because I was definitely making video of that. You know, I accidentally pulled into the wrong dealership, which was kind of spacey on my part. But um, I was kind of stressed and distracted just by the whole situation, and I knew I was going into a stressful conversation to just interact with the service center because I was pretty upset that they sp spent four thousand dollars and or give me a four thousand dollar bill when all I really need to do is change my um, pop. Anyways, um, yeah, now we're at 35 minutes. So with me, thank you very much. Like and subscribe. Um, I'd like to give you more quality content and let you know how things really are for Teslas. Um, I'm not gonna cut them any slack where they screw up. I'll let them know. Well, I'll let you know. And you know, six hours to tow a car to service center is not cool. Telling people that you know. Your car's going to be done in an hour and a half. 
or no, it was less than that. It was 5.30, and they told me that my car was going to be on Wednesday. Or no, it was a Thursday. I can't remember. Thursday was the day. Thursday, they told me, 5.30, I got you. Your car is going to be done. Don't worry about a hotel. And 6 o'clock, they got the tech coming down with, like, no way in hell were they going to have my car ready in a half an hour like he promised. I mean, it's just... And I've had past experiences with Tesla. Back when I was under warranty, I had two or three Tesla service experiences that were... I don't know. I had, I had a couple of really good ones. I had one that was, one other one that was really, really bad where they, and see here I am babbling on still, um, 30, 35 minutes into it, but yeah, I got, I guess I got a lot to say. Um, I hit a deer one time um, and I took a Tesla service to be repaired under insurance and, you know, they, they called me to come pick up my car and, you know, when I'm in Ohio, I'm over an hour away from the service center. And I didn't get a loaner because it was under, you know, vehicle insurance. And so I'd have someone drive me home and I'd have somebody drive me out there to pick up the car. Well, they promised me it was going to be ready and I got there and it wasn't ready. So the guy took the fob and he dangled it in front of me like this. And I've had this car for five and a half years. I bought it new and got it new in September of 2018. So um, first time I ever had a a little bit of a software problem with the car. They um, they took care of me. They gave me um, performance Model S as a loaner car, and it was it was unlocked, and I was able to use ludicrous mode. And you know, I had it for a couple of days, and it was really fun. <laughs> I will say, it's really fun. You know, I'd, I don't buy I don't buy the performance, but if you're going to give me a loaner car that's uh, performance and let me drive it, thank you very much. And it definitely definitely made up for any of the hassles I had under that and that was like within the first year that I had the car so the next year I um you know I hit a deer and they were fixing it so so the salesman that's still one of my biggest nemesis jerk sales or service salesman um held the key up dangling in front of me the fob saying all I'm gonna tell you is this is a fast car I'm sorry I sent you up here without um when your car wasn't brought you up here when your car wasn't gonna be ready but you know take this car home have fun come back tomorrow and pick up your car and uh, with the impression that it was gonna be in ludicrous you know I could you know play with ludicrous mode just a little bit and have fun with that acceleration well I didn't get very far and I'm like this ain't even as fast as my car what the heck's going on start playing with it and I think this is pretty much a Tesla thing universally now you get a loaner, you're not getting ludicrous. You're, um, it was locked in chill mode. So, not only did I not get ludicrous, I didn't even get a car as fast as, you know, chill mode's pretty lame. So, um, so I had to drive that car all the way home and without autopilot and everything because I'm pretty sure it didn't even have autopilot. I mean, I don't know. That's a memory that's probably may or may not be accurate. But, um, definitely had to take an extra three or four hours out of my life because it didn't compare to this one but back then you know I had to had to go make us another special trip to Cleveland to pick up pick up my car so, old story um, from my past experiences with Tesla service but I've had I've had several pretty good ones um, like I said the the first time I had a software problem you know although I was initially upset a little bit with how things went down they, they still were way better than they are now they, um, yeah, I mean, it, I'll take a couple minutes to describe that too. If you're still with me, I mean, it's a long video. Um, I was just driving on autopilot and the screens and everything went black and dead and, but it still continued to drive and I, uh, but I was nervous about it and I didn't really want it to, um, you know, to quit on me where I didn't want, where I wasn't in a safe spot. So I, um. Uh, and I was in Northeast Ohio in Ashtabula County, kind of a little bit more in no man's land for Ohio. You know, Northeast Ohio from, you know, Youngstown to Akron to Cleveland, it's pretty populated. But if you get all the way up the Northeast corner in Ashtabula, it's, you know, it's an hour from stuff. <laughs> and um, so that's where I was. And it, I pulled over to a gas station and put it in park in a comfortable spot and it would not start back up. It was dead 
wouldn't do anything. So Tesla service got on the phone like right away. This is like back in 2019, um, I'm guessing. And they, they were very responsive and I was, however, they, um, they arranged for a tow truck and everything for me. And I was like, well, that sucks. You know, I really, I got a new $88,000 car and, um, never been this stranded on the side of the road waiting for a tow truck. But, um, but it took, took it a good half an hour, 45 minutes or more. And it reset on its own and everything was back to normal. So I called him back up and he said, Hey. Uh, the car seems fine. Let me, let me, uh, let me just take it and see what happens. And they nicely informed me. I don't know about nicely. It's kind of it bugged me a little bit um, that you know while well, the tow truck's always on, all, already on its way, and if you don't, um, you know, accept the tow, we only pay for one tow a day, and we're already paying for this guy to come get you. And um. So if it, if it quits in half an hour from now, you know, we're not, we're not paying for the tow. So I was like, well, come get your piece of crap now. I'm not taking a chance. <laughs> Which is one of those times where you really love something, but it fails you. So you get really mad at it. <laughs> um, I was like, come get your piece of crap. <laughs> but at the same time, I didn't want to wait an hour <laughs> for a tow truck back then. And not now I wait six hours this week. But, um. So I call up the local service center and I get a hold of a, you know, a good guy there that's helpful and understanding of my situation. And he kind of was like, well, I think your car is probably doing okay, but we should run software check and everything on it. Um, I was like, well, can I drive to the tow truck? So I'm not just sitting here, you know, I really, because I guess the plan was to tow me to the service center, which is over an hour away. And then I was going to get a loaner, um, once I got there and, um, I was like, well, if I can drive to the tow truck, I can get to the tow truck quicker and we can. So he, he ended up authorizing me to just drive straight to the service center. And then if something happened, you know, they would come and help rescue the car and get the rest of the way to the service center. And, um, speed up my day. And I mean, Kush, yeah, I, I hear he's no longer with the Cleveland um, service center. But, you know, and then he was the one that hooked me up with the performance Model S. <laughs> For my loaner car after that situation and so that was that was all pretty good experience for me um and then i, don't, I haven't had too many other issues I, I other stuff that was pretty small and, i mean nothing that i remember upsetting me except for you know when when they were doing the collision repair <laughs> that guy i end up i got like a hundred dollar credit or something because that guy made me come back out and I pushed it to through to the upper management um yeah i hope i never see that uh service salesman again <laughs> and no nobody else i've come across um you know they assign you a service salesman if i ever come across another guy like that guy again um i'm out <laughs> i'll be asking for somebody a lot better um i think the guy's name was rudy and Coral Gables. I mean, he was not near as bad as whatever that guy was in Cleveland. Um, actually, Cush ended up after that. Cush was kind of my assigned um, rep <laughs> if I had to bring it, anything in there. And my wife got a model Y and everything else. And, you know, for the most part, I've had pretty successful Tesla service experience. Um, so, all right, I've babbled on for long time anybody who's watched me for this whole 45 minutes i love you guys um thank you um please like and subscribe you can throw some comments in and um have some quality conversation if you want to just bash tesla um, i'm probably not gonna respond too much to you but um any actual good quality comments i definitely enjoy um interacting with other tesla owners or even People that are interested in electric vehicles or seriously want to consider them, but if you just want to bash them, um, if you want to bash them respectfully, I, st I still don't mind going enter entering in a debate because there are pros and cons to them for sure. And if you live in the north, um, think twice about getting an electric one at this point in time. You know, if you lived in Florida, it's a great idea. <laughs> um, if you don't need to run a heater very much, electric cars much more beneficial. You've got to run a heater, you're going to 
you're going to lose quite a bit of efficiency while you're running a heater. And the colder it is, the more more you got to run a heater. So the more power you got to put into heating the car that's normally normally would not be wasted. All right, I'm out for now. Really, I got I got 45 minutes into just making this video too, which is tells me that I probably have like two or three days into editing all the other video that I got going to make a, a good video. So, all right, out for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this and yeah, leave me some comments and like and subscribe. Finally out.